We were holding on, weren't we, Bowie? We, we were holding on, waiting to go live, and now we're live. Yes. Oh, that's really good, actually. Lick my neck, Bowie, because then everyone... No, my neck. Up here. Up here. Give me some kisses. Give me some kisses. Give me some kisses. So that everyone can see your necklace. She's, she needs to do that. Basically... Sorry, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Am I in short? Yes. Um... Betty's wearing her necklace. I don't know if you can see it. Hang on, let me put my glasses on so I can see whether you can see it. Oh, look there. There. She's wearing her felt ball necklace. Well, it was, you know, it was kind of a collar. Um, it's a project, basically, in easy stuff to make with fluff. And basically, this, I don't know if you can see that, is Betty when she was, how old was she, Chris? eight weeks or something they were puppies weren't they and you brought her for the photo shoot when i was writing the book we bought her and she weed all over the floor she weed all over the floor uh with her brother scrum as well who's also in the book but this is bet this is betty wearing <laughs> the, the felt ball necklace it was um quite a stressful afternoon <laughs> the publishers had hired this really really posh house where everything was painted white and uh, the puppies arrived for the photo shoot and weed everywhere, basically. Anyway, <laughs> so Betty's just come on quickly to show you the, the special necklace, which has actually got a little bone hanging from it and a little heart. So you could use it as a collar. Um, Should we take it off you now, Boo? Yes? Is your appearance over now? Yeah, that's your collar. But also over here. No, don't eat that. There's a tr an actual treat. Right, OK. Now you need to go. Come on, off. There we go. Oh, drop that as well. Hello, everyone. Hello and welcome, welcome to my latest uh, live tutorial where we will be making felt beads and felt balls. Actually, felt balls and then felt beads. Now, why on earth would you want to make a felt ball, I hear you cry? Any ideas, Christopher? Um, well, you put me on the spot now. No. Yeah, no. I've got no you idea. You haven't thought it through, have it. you? No, I haven't thought <laughs> it through. If you were short of some balls and needed some balls and all you had available at the time was some fluff, then you would make. Or right. you were a very crafty individual and wanted to craft very something crafty. beautiful. Okay. All right, so let me tell you why you're going to want to make felt balls. So, firstly, the first reason might be that you wanted to make some felt jewellery, because that's probably the main reason or a dog collar, in fact, a dog necklace. Um, so if you wanted to make some felt jewellery and you wanted to make um, some bangles, some necklaces, that's one reason. The second reason is, I know it's not the right time of year, but I am given to believe that people start crafting for Christmas in July. That's a thing. If you want to make some Christmas decks, perfecto. Ideal, I would say. Um, you just make them a bit bigger. If you wanted to make a light pull, and we have quite a few at home, don't we, Chris? Where the, <laughs> I don't think it looks so. uh, where, you know, you go into the room to turn the light on and it's a long thing and you, <coughs> that situation, not obviously a light switch, but a light pull, perfect. Or indeed a key ring, that kind of thing. That's where we're going with this, all right? So lots of uses for felt balls, okay? And indeed, you can cut them in half and use them as decorations, stick them onto things. Oh, here's a necklace, look. So this one's from my book. Um, very pretty. 
Obviously, you can make them in any colours you want to, any size you want to. And then we're going to come on to felt beads. So felt beads, slightly different here. Actually, can you just do a quick overhead shot here? And I'll show people some felt beads, what I'm talking about. So this kind of thing here, um, you can make them as large or as small as you want them. And these are made from a felt sausage like this that you then slice up. Look, here's a curly whirly one. And then you slice these beads off. So actually, once you've made this felt sausage, it's quite a good way of um, making these. And it's quite, um, um, if you want to switch back to me now, Chris, it's quite a good way of making a lot all at once, is what I'm trying to say. So once you've invested the time in making a felt sausage, which can take a little bit of time, you'll see when we come to do it in a minute, um, but once it's done, you've got loads. And if you're really canny and you think it through, you can make the felt sausage different as it goes along. So as you chop it up, they're slightly different as you, as you chop them. So things that you'll need to do all of this today are some merino wool tops, unspun merino wool, which we sell in various different packets and colours and combinations and single colours and over 70 different colours blends, inspiration packs, bundles, bundle deals, so on, all on our website under wool tops. You're going to need some of that. You're going to need something to string them onto if you're going to make them into jewellery. So I've got some of our uh, beading elastic, okay, very, very cheap, goes a long way and is nice and stretchy. So this is see-through. I'll often use this to do bangles and so on. You could also use some of our very, also very cheap waxed cotton stuff. Um, which comes in lots of different colours, um, or you can use ribbon, okay? Or this is just a cord here, but you could thread onto ribbon as well. So when I've done, this is a kit called Bonbon bon Bagatelle. These are the beads that have been threaded onto just this simple ribbon. So just a thin ribbon. And I'm gonna show you how to thread the beads and the balls onto these things really very easily. All you're going to need for that is a simple pair of small pliers. These are jewellery pliers, but if you don't have jewellery pliers, you could use your husband's pliers from the shed. Or if you are watching and you are a husband, you could use your wife's pliers from the shed, not being sexist there. Obviously, everyone has their own pliers. So the other thing I'm gonna be using is a very, very sharp knife. I've just got a really, really old kitchen knife here made by Oppenel, the end of which is actually broken off, it's ancient, uh, which I sharpen when I want to use it and it's super sharp, but actually you'd probably just use a craft knife. You know, one of those ones where you snap off the ends of the blades. One of those, and then some sort of cutting mat or cutting surface that's uh, not going, you don't want to do it on your, your favourite table, your dining room table, because you'll make marks in it. So some sort of protective surface for cutting on. And then you're going to need some soap and some water, some washing up liquid. And if you're making these, you will need a little bamboo mat. OK, you can either use our little one, which is sort of table, to uh, table mat sized, or you can use our big one if you've got the big one. Uh, what else? Oh other thing is if you're going to be decorating these like I have here with the balls these are the, the balls that are from our kit called Fiesta Fandangle okay if you're going to be decorating these and you haven't got the kit you will also want a felting needle okay a 38 gauge star felting needle and that's what I'm going to use to make all these decorations on the ball and that kit does actually also include some of our Angelina glitter fibre so I'll be showing you how to use that as well all right so let's get down to it I'm just going to move some of this stuff out the way and we're going to launch straight into balls Okay, and if at any point you do have a question, please type it onto the screen and Chris will do his best to answer it. He loves asking your questions and so hopefully he's going to be reading through, just checking to see if anyone's asked anything. And then cutting to the wrong camera because I'm reading five Yes, different he has screens. so many things to do. It's really quite very, taxing. Very, very busy. It's very busy. Very busy. He's very busy. And already there's a question in, could you use a tiger tail? I don't know what that even means. A tiger tail? Oh, neither do I. What's a tiger tail? I'm thinking Lisa it's not Helsing, the tail. I think she might be joking. I'm oh, not sure. Is it the tail of a tiger? Or is it a thing that I've never heard of? Oh, I feel like I need to have heard of that. I'm sure she now. will elaborate. Yes, Lisa, tell us what a tiger tail is, please. Now then, 
If you're making something like this or a bracelet or whatever, obviously you want all of these balls to be the same size. All right, so here's my top tip number one. You, you, you portion up your wool tops first, sorry, ancient piece of wool tops, uh, before you start with all of the pieces that you want to make for the balls all the same length, all right? Okay, <laughs> they're not the same length. <laughs> so you would do it so they were the same length-ish, all right? Now, what you need to remember here is that these balls that you make will shrink down from the original. So whilst you can do this now and get a rough idea of how small they're going to end up, just bear in mind they will get smaller so what you could do what's quite sensible before you start is to measure the first piece of wool tops and how much you've pulled off all right so measure that say it's six or eight inches whatever it is make the ball so that you know how much you used or you could even weigh it if you've got some very very accurate scales and then when you want to make all of the other balls the same size, you weigh or measure exactly the same amounts. The second thing I need to tell you is you can use more than one color, all right? So you could use one of our blends that we do, and then you're gonna end up with balls that are all multicolored, which look really pretty if you cut them in half. Same with the beads, I'll come on to that later. Um, I'm just gonna use one color for now, just for simplicity, but you could just bundle up some different colors. All right. Now, the way I like to make felt balls is I like to wet felt them. I'm just gonna move all these things out of the way a little bit. I don't wanna make a, get them all wet and soapy. Um, and it's really important how you wrap this up to make the ball, because you don't want it, what sometimes happens is it turns into a little shriveled brain okay uh, if it's got too many creases on the outside of it so you want to keep it as neat and as tight as you can when you're rolling it up to start with and then we're going to <clears throat> wet it down with the soapy water and then we're going to use a simple old bar of soap any soap will do doesn't have to be expensive cheap soap alkalinity is what's important and all soap is very alkaline so you need the alkalinity of the soap and then just going to start using the bamboo mat all right, so if we can just shift over to the overhead shot here, Chris, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you how I um, roll this up, okay, into a ball. So I just literally just sort of tease it open a little bit, okay, and then I literally just start from one end and roll it up from side to side like this until I get right to the very end like this. I've got a little tufty bit at the top, all right? And then I just carry on. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and just turn that little tufty bit into almost like a little sort of jacket going around the outside of it so that I don't end up with too many folds or creases in it. And it's nice and tight. Okay, like this. So what you don't want is to end up with lots of, um, lots of creases in it where it starts to look like a little brain, all right? So keeping this as tight as possible, you then get your soapy water. So what this is, it's about um, a dessert spoon of washing up liquid filled up with lukewarm water. And I'm just going to squirt this all over my felt ball like this. I'm gonna give it a good old squidge through, all right, like that. I'm just gonna put it down there for a second. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my soap. I'm going to make my hands wet with the soap and make my hands really nice and soapy, like so. And I'm gonna get the ball and I'm gonna to start to very, 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 very gently uh, start rolling this between my palms, all right? If you cut back to me a second. So what you don't want to do here is press really hard, thinking that you're gonna make it happen faster. You need to keep this really, really gentle. So you're literally just rolling it between your palms really, really gently. And every now and again, you may need, if when it starts to sort of dry up and you feel like it's all, evaporating or being absorbed you've got to keep your hands really really soapy all right and then you can go back to it again all right now then if you could just cut back to overhead a second I've got a lovely thing has happened here which I'm quite glad about so I can show you now here is a split all right now you don't want this you want it to be a continuous thing so I'm just going to show you what you could do you can take some of the wool and you can kind of tease it out over the split all right, to stop this from happening. And then you can make sure that it's really, really soapy. And as you roll it, that split hopefully will disappear. But it's really important to keep it gentle, okay? 
and keep it soapy. Can you see how soapy my hands are? All right. If this happens a lot, you may want to start again. All right. So really, you're aiming to keep it nice and soapy and not to have too many sort of cracks in it, if that makes sense, because that's when it tends to turn into the little brain. No one wants a little brain necklace, do they, Christopher? Well, maybe they do. I don't know if that's your thing. No, Gillian. <laughs> if that's your thing, then that's fine. All right, so I would keep going like this for about five minutes. And after about five minutes, you'll suddenly notice that it starts to harden, all right? And when it starts to harden, that's, stop it, that's when you can start to roll it on the mat. All right. But if you do that too soon, you'll squash it and it'll turn into like a flat egg sort of weird shape. So you've got to keep it round like this. OK, but you will notice it start. Suddenly it'll change the way it feels and you're, you're feeling it. You'll feel it harden and then you can start to, to, to apply a little bit more pressure between your palms. And then ultimately, I'm just going to keep going for a minute just to see if that will happen before I start to do it on the mat. And when you do it on the mat, you see, then you've got the slats of the bamboo mat are going to provide that extra little bit of, um, what's it called? Not pressure. Friction. Friction, that's the word, thank you. It's lucky you're here. It's going to provide a little bit of extra friction and then it will make the felting happen faster. All right, I'm going to go for it now, all right. So I'm now just very, very gently, I'm rolling it on here am i in the right place for instagram hopefully i am i know don't Possible don't ma <laughs> don't make that noise <laughs> all right um so instagram's just a sliver down here hopefully you can see what i'm doing all right so again very very gentle don't press too hard okay so i'm just gently doing now as it starts to feel harder then you can start to press harder okay and eventually you'll feel it uh, getting really really hard now um, if you just come back to me a sec, Chris, what are you laughing about? Nothing. Back to me? You? What, this one? <laughs> this is a vision, vision mixing by proxy. Um, what, you what? can have the buttons if you no, want. No, 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 it's fine, thank you. Gladly give you no, the buttons. No, no, it's fine. So as, as you're doing this, you will notice it obviously tightening up and getting harder. And it, obviously it's going to sort of feel smaller as well. Now you want it to get relatively hard but if you're going to then be applying decorations to it like I have here with the Fiesta Fandangle I have to admit this is over 10 years old it's probably more like 30 no maybe it's 11 years old uh, the elastic broke this morning which I think I'd been willing it to do because I wanted to turn it into a light pull and now I can because it's no longer a bracelet so I was sort of thinking I might restring this into a light pull anyway uh, this is the Fiesta Fandangle kit so you can see I've applied all these designs on the outside now if you're going to apply the designs on the outside with a felting needle you don't want it to be too rock solid because that will be harder and you'll probably break the needle but you need to, it to be relatively hard okay so I can feel it starting to harden a little bit now, actually. And you can probably see on the mat here how this, it's this soapiness. Um, can you see? It's fairly smooth. It's still got a little bit of braininess there. But hopefully that would disappear by the time it's finished. All right. So I won't bore you with the rest of this, but you would basically keep going with this. Now my chair's squeaking as well. Can you hear that? Uh, you keep going with this until it is as hard as you can get it. All right. Now, I'm just going to quickly dry my hands and then I'm going to show you how to then needle felt onto top of the top of this. Obviously, you've got the option of doing all sorts of things here. Here's some balls that are slightly different colours, look. And actually, one of a couple of them in Betty's slightly different colours here. Just use lots of colours together and turn them into one ball all right and you can see on this one here i've just sewn on some little beads um so these little beads are like the the toho beads that we sell here and you could just sew those on so that looks rather lovely like that i also want to show you this this is a project from my first book complete felting complete felt making which is here so this is meant to be a cat toy now can you i don't know if you can hear that it's actually got a little bell in the middle of it. So I've taken a bell like this, it's on the bottom of these Christmas decorations, 
and I put it right in the core of it and then I've made this around it. As it happened, this one was completely needle felted and you can see I've needle felted these nobbles onto the outside so it sort of looks like a space alien. Uh, but this is a little cat toy, uh, so that's rather sweet. It's very, very light. Um, and as I say, that's a project in, in that book, Complete Felt Making. Um, but if you do want to just uh, do these little designs here using a felting needle, I'm just going to talk you through that now. So 38 gauge star felting needle, OK? Once your ball is nice and firm, then you will start to needle felt onto it. And you are literally just taking, let's use this one as an example to, to do onto. You're taking very, very small amounts of wool, OK? If you were going to do the little spots like I've been doing here, you really need tiny, tiny, tiny amounts of wool like this. And you would just pop the wool into place. <clears throat> And then using the felting needle, holding it about halfway down, keeping it quite upright, you're then going to stab it into the ball, all right, like so. And you're only stabbing where you want to see it. Now, let me use my special camera. Oh, vision mixer at the ready, please. I just want to show you how that looks a little bit closer up. I can't, I can't stab and show you at the same time but basically you're only stabbing where you want the pattern to be okay so you're just sort of taking the wool and and, and moving it into place and then stabbing it in okay let, let's go back to the other camera um, so only stabbing where you want it to to uh, to actually stay in place like so okay so I'm just teasing it round with the end of the needle and stabbing it in like that. And you can see, it's really, really straightforward. Um, um, and then if you wanted to do a little bit like I have done around the outside, again, it's just the tiniest, tiniest amount of wool tops. Lay it in place and just stab gently, all right, into place like this, all right? So obviously this is a giant one, but you can do the same thing with the smaller ones. And then I just wanted to quickly show you as well how you can use the Angelina fibre to do this. OK, so again, just tiny, tiny bit of Angelina fibre. You can see that on some of these balls here, there's a little bit of silver here. This kit comes with lots of silver. Can you see how I've just added little bits of silver here and there? So it's really nice to do that. And it just gives you a little bit of sparkle as it moves. So again, I just don't use too much of it, but you can actually stab this Angelina in in exactly the same way as the wool. And it just gives you that lovely little sparkly bits, all right? So that's how you would do the little designs on the balls once you've made them. And that's how you would make one of the little balls. Now, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do sausages. Okay, we're gonna make- Would you make... like to take any questions? Yes, absolutely. Right. Let's so let's take ball questions before I move questions. on to sausages. All right. There's a lot of smut going on, so we'll ignore all oh, of that. Okay, you no, we don't want any of that. <laughs> you know, what, um, just from one person? <laughs> oh, did we find out what a tiger's tail yes, is? Yes, we think? did. Okay, a tiger's well, tail yes. uh, is, oh, hold on. I have kind of heard of a tiger's tail, tiger's and I don't tail know why. Tiger's tail is a type of wire used for jewellery making. Oh. There you go. Mm. Um, another question. But what was the question about tigers? Could you use tiger's tail to thread the beads onto? Was that the uh, question? The question was... Um, uh, Maybe... Sorry. Could you use tiger tail? I'm I sure you probably means. could, yeah. Like, if it's used for jewellery making, I'm sure you probably could. And, and when I show you how I thread them on, then you'll be able to see whether you can or not. But I'm guessing it's like... Either it's elasticated or it's not, but I'm I'm sensing yes, probably, because you can use a uh, something that isn't elasticated too, like the waxed cotton cord. All right. Another question: yes. Do you have to wait for the ball to dry before you start? No, you don't actually. Start. You could start threading them before it's dry. Don't, I mean, I wouldn't do it when it was sopping wet. Okay, I'm going to show you threading. Uh, in a little while. Okay. Kirsty Ruby says, "How do you start again?" I say. Rewind the video and have a look. Oh, how do you start with the ball? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going to move on to the... But yes, it's recorded for you, so you can rewind and see how you roll the ball up. OK, so... More questions? Do you want yes, more yes, questions? Yes, yes, yes. No, go, go, uh, go. No, no, sorry, that was smart. Because, yeah, again, you know who you are. Uh, <laughs> oh, dear. 
Uh, <laughs> right. How do you know when to stop felting? Oh, well, when it's when it's got hard enough. So it just needs to be feel quite rock solid, but not so solid that you can't then put the felting needle into it. So relatively solid and hard so that it doesn't have much give to it. Oh, and something I've completely forgotten to say is once you've got to that point, I've lost the felt ball I was making. Where is it? Anyway, uh, once you've got to that point, here it is. You then need to rinse the soap out. Sorry, I'm not by the sink, obviously, so I can't show you how I do that, but you would literally put the tap on once it's rock hard and give it a good old squidge under the tap, get all the soap out. And then what I would do, sorry, I know you've got another question. Then what I would do is come back and just roll it on a tea towel to get the excess moisture out. And then you're ready to thread it. You can do it when it's slightly damp. Sorry, yeah, go on. Segwaying nicely in to Nancy, <laughs> Uh, Clayson, our, our felt artist. Yes. Do you always use washing up liquid, yes. then solid soap? Yes. Could you just use the solid soap yes. and warm water? Uh, no, I like to use the washing up liquid because it gets right into the core of it. And actually, it makes way more difference. It gets much more soapy uh, with the washing up liquid. I mean, you don't have to. You could try it with just soap. But it really gets it go And it, <clears throat> it almost acts almost a bit like glue in that it kind of holds it together. But I don't know if you remember when I first rolled it up and I made it wet and I squidged it with the washing up liquid solution then I just put it down and it just kind of stays put because it's got that soapiness right to the core of it. I think if you just used water to just wet it down and then you put it down, that might not have the same effect. By all means, have a go. I mean, there's nothing to lose, is there? You're just going to be using a, a little bit of wool. You could always chuck it away if it doesn't work, but I always use the washing up liquid. I've always done it. Old habits die hard. I'm probably not going to change now. Kerry Zup says it looks like a coronavirus. We all thought it. <laughs> we didn't say it. <laughs> well, that we, one. That's a band. No, <laughs> the, 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 the jingly one. Oh, this one. Yeah, I guess yeah. it does. Although the coronavirus yeah. is green, isn't it? Is it red? I, I've never actually Little met did I, I know, know back in whenever I wrote that book, which was quite a long time ago, and I think it was 2000 and Oh, I don't even remember. Um, little did I know that a coronavirus pandemic would look like Let's the not same talk as about this. That. Anyway, if you're watching this on YouTube in 20 years' time, you're probably be like, what are they talking about? Right. <clears throat> so, any more questions about balls? Because I'm keen to do the sausage, frankly. No, let's get on with the sausage, Gillian. Okay, all right. So the sausages, oh, I'm moving this, don't move it. The sausages are really exciting, all right, because I don't know what it is. You know, like Fimo, when you make fi oh, Fimo sort of beads and stuff like that, it's a bit like that. And you have to kind of think from the inside out of it. So like with this one, there's sort of core, a core of colour, a bit like rock, you know, rock. That's, that's a British thing, rock, isn't it? that you buy at the seaside, Brighton Rock. And it's like this, if you're from abroad, basically it's this like horrible sort of candy, sweet stuff that's, that's made in a long tube and they chop it up into sweets. It's a bit like that. Um, and when they make all the sugar, they put it all in the colours together. It's quite similar actually. So you can see I've got the, the different colours in the core of it and then this around the outside. Possibilities are endless. And you can see with this one I made, <clears throat> Actually, just, just jump to the overhead a second, Chris. Um, here's some different sort of versions that I've made of things. I'm just trying to, where's that pink one gone? Oh gosh, there's so many bits and pieces everywhere. Anyway, so you can see with this, you've got this kind of curly whirly situation going around, around here <clears throat> with some other bits in between. But here, I've done it more like it's a flower in the middle with some colour around the outside. These are the ones from the kit called Bonbon Bagatelle. It's so pretty. So that gets made into a necklace like this once you've made this sausage. So this is a kit and you can see there's like yellow core right in the middle and then all these other bits are curly whirlies around the outside. Right, so when you're doing these curly whirlies like this and this and this one here, like this, I don't know if you can see that. <clears throat> When you're doing those, what we're going to do is we're going to make a big, come back to me, we're going to, we're going to make a big sheet of felt, okay, with some colours laid out one on top of the other, which is what I'm going to show you now. 
and then a core in the middle and then it all gets rolled up into a sausage. When you make the one that's kind of more, what I call a random sausage, that's slightly different. Uh, and I'll talk you through that one as well. Okay, so I just want to get going with this because it can be quite sort of long-winded to make. So, some lengths of wool tops. I, I mean, you know, it, it, de it depends how big you want to make it. It depends how fat you want to make it that way. It depends how long you want to make it this way. I'm just going to make a short one in the middle here because I haven't got much time, all right. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by pulling off the wool tops just as I would if I was making anything else out of that, like a bag or slippers and I'm lit or a picture. And I'm pulling off the end of the wool tops in a very wispy way. I'm holding my hand down here, six to eight inches down, grabbing the very ends, pulling gently and releasing the fibres. And I'm just going to lay them down in the opposite direction here to the slats. So I've got soapy hands and my hands are a bit sticky. I'm up in the opposite way to the slats on the bamboo mat, all right, like so. And I'm just going to make it I don't know, let's just make it sort of six inches wide-ish, six to eight inches wide-ish. So I'm just laying down what I call a layer of colour here so that um, I can no longer see these slats underneath, all right? And I've chosen a colour that hopefully you can all see clearly. Um, now, what's interesting, what's interesting here is... Uh, when you cut it this way, you lose some of the definition of the colour. It's really weird. I've noticed this from doing it. So I've got, you know, in this one, I've got quite a vibrant green, actually, and then a teal colour and like a cherry red, which are all sort of, you know, fairly contrasty. But when you do this and then you cut the beads, you kind of lose that vibrancy and contrast. So my advice is to really go for very, very contrasty colours when you're choosing the colours to do, if you want to do the curly whirly sausage, all right? Because uh, you want them to look nice and different against one another. So I've chosen this red here, all right, like this. Then I'm going to go with the ice queen that we've got, okay? So again, I'm gonna pull this off. I'm gonna lay it over the top. I'm gonna lay it in the other direction over the top, okay? Like so. And again, I'm gonna make lay a really good layer of this so that, um, I can no longer see the colour underneath. So you get enough of it when you chop it up, all right? So hopefully that makes sense. So I'm just going to carry on with this. If you've never done this before and you get the wool tops and you think, well, what's she doing, what's she doing? Let me just do a very, very slow-mo how to pull the wool off, all right? So you get the end of the wool like this. It should be a nice sort of even end like this. Six to eight inches down. Don't hold it too high up, otherwise you can't pull it off. Don't grab too much of it, otherwise you can't pull it off. You are literally just pulling off the very ends. It should be wispy, all right? Then I'm laying it all down in the same direction like so. And I'm just going to speed up so it's not too boring for you all to watch and I'm just laying down a good layer of it. All right, now then, you can now carry on doing all sorts. If you think about it, I'm going to, I'm going to be rolling my sausage up um, this way, but you could quite just as easily roll it up the other way. All right, so if I switch this round now and did it that way, okay, actually, maybe I will do it this way. It would make more sense, wouldn't it? Because that's the way my bamboo mat's going like this. So what I'll do is I'll do it this way for you. Um, if you want to, you could then carry on adding layers and layers on top of this. So I could then do, I don't know, I could then do a layer of orange, yes? Going back this way over the top and so on. Or what I'm actually going to do is, I'm actually going to add in some of these core colours in the middle here like this, all right? And like I was saying earlier, when you're making the sausage, if you want to think about it when you've rolled up, maybe you might want to lay some bits this end at a one colour, some bits that end that are another colour, and so on. What I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to lay some core, some randomness. Oh, we love a bit of randomness. So me, a bit of randomness, unplanned. Who knows what will happen? Serendipity, that's what I like to call it. Just, you know, see what happens. Love that. So I'm just basically getting that together and imagining what it would look like if it was cut through the middle, all right? So I've got a bit of green, I've got a bit of blue, I've got a bit of red, I've got a bit of orange. Let's stick in a bit of yellow for good measure, 
like so, all right? Um, before I do that though, I'm just going to pop a bit of netting over the top of these two layers that I've laid down. And then I'm just gonna wet them down with a bit of the soapy water because this is going to make it easier when I roll it up, okay? And then I'm just going to get a dishcloth and I'm just gonna push that soapy water through the fibers. And basically all I'm doing here is I'm just getting the air out of it because if you've got lots of air in your sausage, it's gonna make it much, much more difficult to roll it up and get it felted, okay? Stop the sniggering in the background, please. Whoever's sniggering. Was it you or was it someone else? Was it Betty? It was somebody else. It's nothing to do with me. <laughs> All right. So can you see there's areas of this now that are still sort of a bit puffy. Just going to try and remove all of the puffiness from the wool. Okay. Like so. So it's nice and flat. And then I'm going to put my core in the middle of that. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to get my core now and I'm just going to wet that down as well. I'm going to just squidge a little bit of the soapy water. So whoever asked me about the soapy water earlier, can you see now having that soapiness in there, in the water, it just helps it all kind of squidge together perfectly. Now, we obviously don't want the piece of netting involved in this full sausage. So that's coming off now. We don't need that. And then I'm just going to put this core back in the middle. I am, however, just going to just remove the ends. It's a little bit long. Let's just get rid of those. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it down this end here. And I'm just going to, now what you need to do is you need to roll this up as tightly as you possibly can. It's the air inside these things that makes it more long-winded and take, makes it longer to do. So you can do it like sushi if you want to, and you can use the mat to help you bring it round. If it's got too much water in it as well, squidge some of the water out and um, just mop it up with a tea towel underneath as you're doing it. Okay, but you really do want to keep this as tight as you possibly can. Actually, just bear with me two seconds while I just put this a bit flatter. And I'm moving this all over the place. Slightly, a bit low in shot for Instagram. That way? There? Uh, yeah. Okay, so. okay. Is that in now? Oh, it's hard to tell because there's a delay. Oh, sorry, okay. So like that. And as you can see, I'm just, I don't know if any of you have ever made sushi. Probably not. <laughs> if you have, you'll know what I mean. You're kind of pushing it and getting all of the air out of it with the bamboo mat, okay? And I've got all those lovely colours in the middle and then I've got this going around the outside now, like this, okay? And then I'm nearly there with my fabulous felt sausage, okay? Now, there we go, like that, okay? Just gonna give that a little roll now. So what I would do now is I would start to roll this. I'm just going to keep this here actually, this tea towel, just because it will stop my mat from slipping back and forth quite so much. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring the bamboo around the sausage and I'm just going to give it a bit of a, a roll like this. Or even what you could do is roll it up in the bamboo like this and roll it like this. And this will kind of, it's quite delicate at the moment because that wool is not at all felted, okay? So having the bamboo around it will kind of protect it a little bit till you get it going. But what's really important here is that it's nice and soapy, all right? So it needs to be wet all the way through. It needs to be nice and soapy. And what you'll find is that the bamboo mat will keep absorbing all of the water in the soap and you will need to keep applying it. So. It's a good idea just to get your bar of soap every now and again, roll it down the length of it, or get your hands nice and soapy. Oh God, I'm just getting the water everywhere. Get your hands nice and soapy and just keep squidging the soap onto it like that. And make sure that when you squidge it, can you see? It's nice and soapy. All right, and now the boring bit, okay? This takes a lot of rolling, okay? And when um, I've had people here on my workshops, they do get a little bit bored of this, if I'm honest. 
So bearing in mind you're not going to be here on a workshop with me doing this, you'd probably pop the radio on or you could even watch something on the screen actually because you are literally just rolling it backwards and forwards. And you need to felt this now till it goes rock hard, a bit like the ball. Obviously the ball's a lot faster, you can make a felt ball in about 10 minutes, but with this it could take an hour or two. It depends, it depends how big it is. The, the fatter it is, the bigger you've made it, like this fellow, the longer it will take, all right? If you've made a thinner, smaller one, it should happen faster. Okay, you could um, maybe rent some small children to do it for a little while or um, coerce a partner into helping you do it. Now, the other thing that makes it a lot faster is that every now and again, you take it out of your Bambi mat and go and pour boiling water over it in the sink. Health and safety at, at, at work, obviously. Oh, you're boiling looking, water? You're looking alert. Suddenly you... No become, way! Yeah. So basically, <laughs> just put it in the sink, boil the kettle, be very careful, don't get the boiling water on your hands, yada yada. Just uh, health and safety there. If you're scared of boiling water, just turn your, your tap water on to as hot as it will go and put it onto that. But that will kind of shrink it and shock it and help felt it, all right? Then just obviously leave that for a few minutes, don't touch it straight away because you burn your fingers. Leave it for a few minutes and then if you want to, freezing cold water straight away, again shocks it. Don't do this right at the beginning. Do a few, like 10 minutes rolling first before you go and do it. Do it every 10 minutes and it just speeds up the whole thing. But when you come back from doing that, get as much of the moisture out of it as you can in the sink and then come back and then re-soap it up again. So tiny bit of the soapy water maybe that you've got the washing up liquid in and then maybe a bit of your other soap as well. I mean, I just think the, the, the washing up liquid in the water is really the way to go with this. Do you, it, do you have to use boiling water? That is no, a question for me. No, no, no. So just use really, really hot water and really, really cold water. The extremes of temperature will shock it and shrink it and felt it faster. But if you're worried about doing that or if you're doing it with children, then obviously don't do that. Keep it, um, you know, just as hot, hand hot or as hot as you want to touch, you know. Um, it just speeds the whole thing up a little bit um, and it punctuates this boring rolling routine. All right. So basically you would now roll this until it's rock hard. Is there another question? Sorry. There, there is another question. And hold on, I've got to just oh. turn around to ask oh. it. Um, Joanne Evans says, for the balls, yeah. could you use some other fibre in the centre to save using so much felting tops? Nah. Well, you're not using that much felting tops. Probably weigh, when it's dry, it probably weighs like five grams or something. I mean, I was saying this last week actually, or the week before actually, when people were asking me about, do you use a core wool when you're needle felting small animals and fish and birds and stuff? And I was like, no, I just use my merino wool tops because mm, I don't, I'm hardly using any. I mean, if you actually weighed it out and wor worked out what it would cost, it would be not a lot, to be honest. Um, so that's me. But yeah, you could. If it's wool, it doesn't really matter. Like, if you live on a farm and you're collecting loads of weird sheep wool from the field every day that's... Um, a, a breed of sheep that you wouldn't normally use for felting. Yes, you can stick that in the middle of the felt ball and use the lovely merino around the outside, which felts faster and better. But if you are using other wool in the centre, do remember that different wools don't felt to each other very easily. And if you ask me that question about making a felt bag or so on, I must roll while I'm chatting. Um, I would say no, you can't. So if you're making a felt bag and you, you want to do one layer made from the sheep you found in your field of unknown origin from some random sheep that you walked past and then you're putting a merino wool tops on the top, they won't felt together because they are a different handle. They're a different, you know, the, the length of the fibres is different and they don't like interlock and felt together and you'll end up with separate layers that may happen in a ball, although it's less important and I doubt you'd notice. So if that answers your question, yeah, give it a go. Give it a go. It's only a felt ball. Um, have a go. Yes, I'm sure you'll be successful. But at the same time, unless you're making the biggest felt ball in the entire world, uh, you're not using very much wool tops and it's of little relevance, I would say. Maybe I'm just a bit gung-ho about these things. I don't know. Was that it, the questions for now? Or do you have... Uh, oh, no, there is a question from YouTube. 
Yes. We're getting questions from Oh, you. hello, YouTubers. Oh, I love um, it. It's so exciting. Perhaps a little bit previous. Oh, okay. Um, and it's from Diana, sorry, Diane, Diane. on YouTube. And she's asking about... Uh, how do you thread through the ball? I'm going to show you that, Diane. That's what I thought. That's coming. How are we doing for time? Oh, yeah. my God. Right, hurry up. Get okay. All right, so I, I don't have time to show you this finished, but next I'm going to show you how to cut them. Okay, and then I'm going to show you how to thread them. I'm going to remove my beautiful towel and bamboo mat and go onto this dark green cutting mat. All right. So pretend this is made. It's rock hard, rock solid, uh, a bit like the, the one that I've already made here. All right. Now, I've got a very sharp knife that I sharpen on a stone, but like I mentioned earlier, you could use a craft knife. Once this is solid, then you are literally... Look, am I in the right place here, for, for instance? Uh, uh, I'll tell you in a second. OK. I'll do a couple. You are literally like you're slicing off a salami or whatever it is that you cut like this, a sausage. OK, and making your beads. OK, so this is obviously great. Like I'm wearing a bracelet here with loads, actually, as well. Look, I um, think your knife could be sharper. Yeah, I did sharpen it actually yesterday. And I, I've got so many things in front of me here on the table. I can't find the stone that I sharpened it on. But anyway, yes, it could be sharper. But look, I'm just showing you an example. But what I want to do now, even though I haven't finished it, is just slice through this, actually. I will finish it, but I just want to show you how the beads will look when it's finished. You can see it's it's all too sloppy at the moment. <gasps> OMG, look at that. Can everyone see that? Hang on, let, get let, me, get, let me get my special camera. cam. Oh my goodness, look at that, guys. How exciting is that? Look. So you can see, here's the red and the blue that I started with, and there's the core of colours in the middle. You can see how it works. And you can see the amount that I used and how that's ended up size-wise. OK, so cut back to me. So you can see that that's probably... It's a similar size to that blue one that I was just cutting just now, actually, slightly smaller. So the more wool you use and the, the more layers you build up, the bigger the sausage will be, all right? So that's to be finished, obviously. Those beads can be finished, but they are rather splendid. Uh, you can make, and, and you get so many, you get so many. So you can make key rings, light pulls, all the things that I mentioned before. You could even like string lots of these onto a Christmas tree as well. It doesn't have to be just a big ball or you could put one under a ball like this. I always think that looks quite nice as well. All right, so let's just now quickly move on to threading them. Whilst right. you're doing that, yes. there's a special oh question gosh. in from a special correspondent <laughs> asking <laughs> about the ratio yeah. of washing up liquid oh, yes. to water. Yes. This question's coming in I from Dickie's would... mother-in-law, so oh, okay. make it a good answer. Okay, right? <laughs> yeah, Dickie's mother-in-law. Carolyn, isn't it? Yeah. So I always do a, go a good squirt. What's a good squirt? I would say about a tablespoon in a bottle like this. So you don't want to go too crazy because if you put too much in, you get it gets too frothy and too sudsy and then it's really difficult to rinse it all out again. So I, sometimes people like pour in loads like this. It's like, no, about a tablespoon is sufficient to fill it up a bottle like that. I hope that answers that. All right, so what I've got here then is some, you probably can't see it. It's because it's see-through. It's, uh, let's just go overhead for a second. It's stretchy. Uh, beading fabric. Can you see it? It's like catching the light there. All right. And then what I use for this and my favourite needles of all time that I use all the time in felting are these yarn darners that we sell. OK. Um, and these basically a yarn darner. It's sharp. It's quite sort of substantial and it has a big enough eye to thread things like this through it. So you would also probably be able to thread through this uh, waxed cord and stuff like that. And you'd be able to thread through a, a, um, a thinnish ribbon that's like that as well. So that's perfect. So I've just made um, like a treble knot in the bottom of this. But I want to show you how to thread this through the beads and, and these uh, balls when you're making the bracelets. All right, so what I do is I put it in the, the bottom of the ball like this and then I, I put it onto my cutting mat and I push it down like so. Actually, I'm just going to try and come back in the original place for this 
bead, which is about there. Right, I push it through like that. Now, sometimes it's quite difficult to get the eye of the needle through. So this is where I get my pliers, okay? So I've just got my small little pair of pliers, any pliers will do. And then I basically, okay, take care not to have it coming unthreaded. I just pull it through like this and that brings that through and it just gives you that sort of helping hand and then once that's through obviously and then they're just going to take that down to the knot like that okay so let me do the next one just get it off its old elastic and put it on its new elastic so there's the original hole so I'm just going to go down there and I'm going to try and come up roughly in the right place there push it down as far as it will go take the um, the pliers and just pull through like that. So there, all right. So if I was doing a bead, I'd do it in the same way. So let's do this bead as an example next. So I'm just gonna go through. You need to cut your beads wide enough for this to happen, but I'm just going to try and get it roughly in the middle. So there, there's my bead on the, on the needle, okay. Take the pliers, pull it through, okay. And then join like that. Can you see? So that's how to, and, and you can see on this bracelet here, I've added in a few beads, or you could add, you could add in some of these as well if you were doing smaller things, um, or you could add in some little jingle jangles or whatever. And then here, just in case anyone wants to ask me, I've made two smaller beads here and here like this, but I've made the equivalent of what is a very, very, very small sausage, just black and white, rolled it together, and I've rolled that until it's become a felted band like this. This is a project in my book if you want to do it. And then I've actually made the closure out of this as well. So I've looped it round on one side to give me a loop here. I've knotted it and I've glued it with gem tack. And then on the other side here, I've threaded in a little bead and I've just made it an end so it can't come off with another knot. And that's the closure at the back of the necklace there. All right. So the whole thing is made from felt. If you wanted to do that, you can. So you could do that you know, for a bracelet as well, if you wanted to. But obviously, for speed and ease of use, I would go for something like the beading elastic um, or the waxed cord. Okay, any questions? You need questions? to put your foot down. You've got eight minutes left. No, I'm pretty much there, actually. I just, um, if there are any questions about any of that, please ask them now. I think the thing that I wanted to just um, emphasize is that you do need to keep felting this sausage until it's really quite firm because if you cut it too soon like I have it has the potential to fall to bits like I could quite easily look pull this apart okay it's not felted properly because I was doing it for a few minutes you do really really need to do it until it's very very firm I mean it's still got some give to it but the firmer it is the better your beads will look and the less fluffy they'll look all right. Question in mm. uh, from Crochet with the Fairies. That's a good name, isn't it? Yeah, on Instagram. How do you fasten off the bracelet? I presume. Well, I, you care. know me, gung ho as ever. I just use a knot. <laughs> what with the with the beading elastic? Yeah, I just I just knot it. So the one that um, here's one. Oh, look, this is a cute one, actually. This has got buttons in between, just like wooden buttons in between the balls. It's really ancient, actually. It's a bit stretched, if I'm honest. But there's just a little knot in here somewhere. What I do always do, I know I harp on about this glue all the time. Where is it? Let me just grab it. Hang on. This gem tack, yeah? I do use it all the time. Um, I just put a little blob of this on the knot, okay? to protect it. Um, I did the same with these, oh, I haven't got them. I took them off in the bath this morning. The, the what, little ones that I made on my other uh, tutorial the other week, just using these little beads and ready-made pom-poms and tassels. Just put a little blob of the glue on the knot. Other questions, quickly. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, do you need to rinse all these things after you've yes. finished them? Yes, sorry, yeah. I, I, I kind of just remembered to tell you that about the ball earlier. Same applies to the sausage. Get all the soap out at the end. Can take quite a lot of rinsing, yes? Okay. So you're going back every now and again and doing the really hot and the really cold just to kind of 
jolly it along and make it felt more quickly. But then when you get to the very end, do make sure all of the soap is out. Okay. okay. And another question, do you ever felt the, uh, the beads after they're finished? Sorry, the sausage, that's the word. Do I felt the sausage? After you've oh. cut it. Oh presumably. no, it should be done. It should be should done. Be done. Okay. I mean, you could do if it wasn't done, but make sure it's rock hard, finished, soap out, as much of the moisture out as possible before you cut it. And obviously I jumped the gun there. I only did it for a couple of minutes, but you need to do it for about an hour. Is there a kit for the swirl beads? Yes, that's the bon bon bagatelle. <coughs> okay, comes with everything you need to make the... Uh, bon bon bagatelle. This one, all right. Okay. Want to do the overhead? Just show that quickly. No? Hello? No, what? it's not this. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm reading questions. <laughs> no, no, it's all right. That one, sake. that's the kit. All right. I just okay. wanted to quickly show people. All right. Okay. Sorry. Yes, go on. There was a question earlier, and I mm. can't remember who asked it, asking, do you sell your books? Yes. Of course. We sell signed copies that are usually the, either the same price or cheaper than Amazon. Don't buy them from Amazon. I hate Amazon. Um, <laughs> God, I probably shouldn't say that on YouTube. They probably own YouTube or something, do they? What happens uh, if you don't rinse the soap out? Well, in theory, over time, it could rot away the wool, in theory. I have to say, in all the years I've been making felt, I've never known that happen. But you're meant to have a neutral pH at the end. So if it's very alkaline, you would want to neutralise it. Some people use vinegar. Don't bother with any of that. But just rinse the soap out, else it remains very alkaline and it could just deteriorate over time. You know, like, so if you left it to your grandchildren, the light pull or the necklace, <laughs> you wouldn't want it to disintegrate when they were wearing it. So just rinse the balls out. There was another question about threading ribbon, but that the same rules apply with the needle. Same thing, yeah. So if you use the fantabulous uh, yarn darner, then just thread the ribbon through that. And in fact, with the packet of these, you do get some even bigger ones. So you can get most ribbon through it, especially if you folded the ribbon in half. You should be able to get it through as it's really wide ribbon. We are sadly about to run right okay next on. week i'm going to be showing you Good how stuff. to make beeswax wraps beeswax wraps all right we sell a beeswax wraps kit okay makes three comes with some lovely fabrics inside it and we also oh no that's that one that's that one and we also sell a refill kit where it just comes with the bits and you use your own fabric and i am going to be here with a hot plate next week showing you how to do that all right, um, so if you I want did, to join in, get I did miss a question that oh. we should get in, uh, mm. which was, could you do these things without a mat and just use your hands? Yeah, you definitely can with the balls. I mean, you, maybe you could improvise and use some um, bubble wrap or something, or just something a little bit ridged that you've got at home, or a bit, a bit textury to give you a bit of friction. Happens faster if you can just put it on something with a bit of friction can't think what off the top of my head that you would use if you didn't have a mat. Certainly if, you have this, if you're doing the sausage, I'd say you need a mat. That's going to be quite tricky. But certainly with the balls, you could have a go without the mat. Definitely. Yes. Okay. Sorry if I missed your question, but we're about to run out uh, of If we missed your so. question, I'll go through them and I'll answer it with the typing. That's, uh, I've ignored a lot of questions from Kerry Zah. <gasps> because I think maybe she started on the sherry a little bit early this morning. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry, Kerry. Anyway, join us next week. We'll be back again with the beeswax wraps making. Um, the environmental alternative to cling film. But for now, goodbye and have a lovely, lovely weekend.